Hey guys, welcome to the Fred Irishman. Today we're going to talk about the five W's of campsite selection. So you've been hiking, you want to stop for a night, you're not sure where to stop, these five W's will help you determine where to stop. All right, so what are the five W's? Water, wood, widow makers, wildlife, and wind. So the first one, water. You want to get to a water source nearby, a good water source for hydration, cooking, stuff like that. Also, when we talk about water, beautiful, on a keel, we want to make sure that we don't set up in a low-lying area because when the rain comes in, your beautiful area will turn into a swimming pool and you won't be happy. So, <clears throat> next, wood. When you come to a campsite, so, uh, you want to make sure there's an ample supply of wood. Wood's great for, you know, obviously cooking, water purification, but at night, you know, you just like having the warmth. You want to have that sense of security. So you always want to have wood nearby. Also, too, when you, uh, when you pick your wood, you want to make sure that you go out a little bit and get it. Not too far, but a little bit out. And you want to always want to get two to three times more than what you think is enough. And if you don't have enough, now you got the area around you that you grab. You don't want to go out and stumbling in the woods, trip, get yourself hurt. Okay, widow makers. We've all done this. We find a spot, we're in love with it, we set up, and all of a sudden, somebody either says this to us, or we kind of look up and we see a widow maker. Now, I wouldn't sit up around here either because of the poison ivy, but if this comes down, this is going to hurt you. So make sure that, you know, if you see something like this, stay away from it. Now, the other thing that we talk about was widow makers. Everybody looks up. They think they know it. It's also, look around, 360. Because if there's a tree that's leaning, it's, you know, dry, dry rotted or whatever, and it falls, is it going to reach you and is it going to hit you? Usually you can tell. If you can't and you, you have some doubt about it, move. Don't take the risk. Okay, wildlife. Now, wildlife. <clears throat> what I like to do is I usually come out and I usually go online. Sorry, I go online. I research the area if I've never been there. I want to know what's out there. So once I figure that out and I come out here, I look for signs. So signs would be uh, game trails. It would be scat. It could be, you know, like claw marks. You know, maybe it's a bear or something like that. So take a good look around. Also, too, if you're near that water source, you don't want to be too close to the water source because these animals will, every once in a while, go down and grab a drink. So keep that in mind. Now, the last one is wind. I refer to it as weather. I know that's not the correct way to think of it. But to me, it kind of goes hand in hand. So I do top setups. So if I had this top set up in the wrong direction, and currently I think the wind's coming from my back, and I set up the opening to the, that way, all that rain's going to come in, and I'm going to be miserable all night long. The other part of the equation that when I think about weather is I want to set up like a, a microclimate. So if it's cold out, I want to open it up a little. Let that breeze come in. But if it's cold, I want to shrink it down, put a fire in front of it, and let some of that heat get trapped in our top setup. So hopefully these things really helped you out, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video.